I think it's incredible that the company uh, still uh, try to shirk their responsibilities all these years later. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. And that they continue. That Mike Yaji is a member of the National Advisory Council to the Thalidomide Trust. Thalidomide is a drug that was released into the market by the German pharmaceutical company Grunenthal between 1956 and 1962. Thought to help cure anxiety, insomnia and morning sickness in pregnant women, thalidomide led to approximately 10,000 infants being born with malformations of the limbs and internal organs across Europe, Australia and the United States. In 1971, nine years after the drug was taken off the market, the German courts closed the criminal case against Grunenthal and a trust fund was set up for the children affected. However, the UK government has accepted that thalidomide victims are receiving insufficient funding to cover the costs of their illness, and the trust demands that Grunenthal pay compensation. Having failed as yet to receive any support from the European Commissioner for Health, Tonio Borsch, RG is pleading for MEPs to put pressure on Borsch to meet with the Trust and also open dialogue with the Social Affairs Commissioner. I believe that specific assistance for mediation between thalidomide survivors and Grunenthal is best sought at national level, as member states, governments and authorities have been more directly involved in any discussions including survivors and their families, pharmaceutical companies and national compensation trusts. So, in other words, the British taxpayer could pick up the bill. Yeah. How do we get Gruenthal to, if they won't respond except through the German legal system, how else can we do it? And one way is by, through public embarrassment. Yes. If we could get an initiative in the chamber in Strasbourg, if we could arrange an oral question with debate from the groups, um, and he would have to come to the plenary to respond. Who's to the, he? The, the abortion. Yes. He would have to come into the full chamber to respond. Right. Now, would he have the, the brass neck to come along and say, well, that's not my responsibility, it's member states? I don't think so. I mean, I think he'd be squirming a bit on the spot. Well, also, to get him in front of us, because I think that <coughs> once once um, yeah. I have the rest of my team with me, yeah. um, and we lay, not lay into him, but we start the debate going, yeah. the, uh, there is no argument. No. Um, at the moment, it's just a piece of paper, and you can just, you can just smack away a piece of paper. Yeah, exactly. You only have three people sitting in front of you. It's a very different story, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. oh, so, thank you very so, much for seeing good me. To see you. Yeah, you and too. We'll see each other again. I'm sure we will. And um, yeah, look forward to possibly meeting. Um, Last one. Yeah, yeah. that would be fantastic. We'll pin him down. Lovely. He's, actually, we won't need to. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Request is down. It's already requested? Good. We've already sent a request through. So we'll Lovely. let you know. Wow, thank you very much. There are some very responsible companies out there, but there are also some that just do not shoulder their responsibilities. And when that happens, it's the responsibility of us as lawmakers to try to make sure that we put in place the laws that bring them to account. We've been trying to put in place a, a law on what we call corporate social responsibility for a decade and more now to get companies to act in a socially responsible way. And we, said we haven't succeeded. The European Commission always says, no, no, what we need is a voluntary code of practice. The companies will do the right thing left to their own devices. Well, that's not true, sadly. We need some something in the legal framework that requires good social reporting and accountability from companies. But that's a, uh, a campaign <laughs> that continues. Yeah. Maybe we'll win in the end.